Hey, Jillian. So Hi. Good to chat about health freedom today. Oh my goodness! Like if somebody gets it, you do for sure. As as you know, you know I was a combat veteran, came home, struggled like so many other veterans, and turned my life around over the course of time, thankfully. And uh, you know, shared uh, my memoir a couple of years ago. Wrote wrote uh, American Dream and kind of shared some of the the secrets, if you will. But they're not a secret. But they're all things that you you know, have made a big part of your life as a, you know, as a fitness trainer and a certified nutritionist, you know, that um, the three points, we have time freedom, health freedom, and mind freedom. And health freedom is everything. I mean, wh what are your thoughts about folks who haven't, you know, who are still addicted to sugars and still addicted to the processed foods, even today, when we, we have so much information out there about it? I mean, look, everybody's going to be different, right? They, they're they going to need a different approach. For me, I gave up actual like processed white sugar three years ago um, just to see if I could. And I, I did. There wasn't a major shift. It's like I don't have a big YouTube headline because I was incorporating it moderately. It wasn't like, this is what happened when I gave up sugar because I wasn't eating a crazy amount of it. If somebody wants to balance those things, right, and have it 20% of the time, I think that, that that's totally fine, right? You can make that work. But in and of itself, being able to make that choice and have that control is freedom. If you have the knowledge and you apply it intelligently, there's room for these things in a healthy lifestyle. It's just about balance. Yeah. And it, that's, that's really all that knowledge does is it provides you with the ability to make choices that will yield an outcome you're, you're desiring, if you will. And, and, you know, if we're speaking about freedom, I think that's freedom, right? Knowing how to make the right choices so you get the desired outcome. 100%. Freedom taking control back over your life. Yeah. And the biggest pain point people have been experiencing probably the past 18 months, 19 months. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, and you know, to, what I, obviously you have so much more clarity, the older you get and you experience things and you learn from your mistakes, you have so much more clarity over the past. And when I realized how, um, primitive, fundamental, these little incremental changes really are and how significant they are to our lives, you know, right? I feel like this message needs to get out much more because people can have so much more control of their lives, you know? What, what do you think you have, over the years, like what has stood out as the biggest hurdle that, you know, really holds people back? Oh my God, depends. Which aspect of their life? I... There's a million. I mean, you know, dysfunctional childhoods, limiting beliefs about their capabilities. I mean, it's all the same, but then you could get into the, there, there are some actual fundamentals that play a role, a socioeconomic. Um, it really just depends on what is the goal and who is the person. But I think the, the bigger conversation is not so much on the obstacles because everybody will have many. They just will. But more about the fact that no matter who you are, they can be overcome. Mm -hmm. um, and there are many examples of that. You know, nowadays we love to talk about the victims and how unfair everything is. But a lot of times the people talking about being a victim are the ones that are the exception to the rule, that are the most success successful, right? It's like, you know, Oprah talks about I was just having this conversation with Adam Carolla. It's like, oh, it's so unfair and everything. And it's like, you are one of the richest women in the world. You, you are evidence unto itself that any obstacle can be overcome. That is an inspiration. Shouldn't you be having that conversation more than anything else? Um, I think focusing on the fact that obstacles can be overcome is, is critical. I love that because, you know, that's what I realized with my story. It's a duty of mine, say, even just within the veteran community to show that you can turn your life around, that you can let go of the past and 
grow from that and become a better version of yourself, you know, and once I realized that that is so important to share, to share with others, because then they see a clear pathway or they see a light at the end of the tunnel and they can do the same, you know, take their own path to change their lives around. So it's so important, like you said, to, to share those stories because it does inspire other people for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I actually uh, started Triangle Fragrance. It's a modern luxury eau de parfum, but have these self-help cards. And that's what it's all about. So people think it's about the fragrance, but really it's about that self-help that'll lead them back to that freedom triangle. And I'm sure you'd agree with, you know, with everything you've done professionally over your career, it's really about finding that root cause and getting people to let go of those limiting beliefs, as you just mentioned. It, it's, that's definitely crucial <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they, you can do only so much for someone. They have to want to improve, to grow. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and how much do you believe in, you know, I, what I'm seeing, you know, with folks that, you know, friends of mine, even that they, they want to grow, but they're not willing to get out of their comfort zone. How important is getting out of your comfort zone and doing things that scare you or you find challenging? Oh. Um, is that? Uh, <laughs> Look, it's, uh, it's the only way forward, but you know, you're not really, you can't force somebody to take that, that step. Um, and a lot of times life will do it for you. So, you know, things will become so painful. Things will become so hard that it's more painful where you are currently standing than the work and the sacrifice associated with getting where you want to go and then you'll move. But, you know, life really does. I can't tell you, even myself, I've been guilty of this. It's like, oh, you know slow down or do this or let go of that or you would you know forgive this and you're like nah, 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 nah. even though on some level maybe you think you should or you don't know how i promise you life will break you down to a point that you you will find a way to move forward so i hope it doesn't come to that but often it does and I, you know not to go back to oprah intentionally but she did say it best she's like life you know kind of speaks to you in these little whispers <laughs> gives you a little flick throws a stone at you you know throws a rock at you and then it's like the whole mountain comes down upon you it's like you, you, if you don't listen it just keeps intensifying until you do yeah absolutely how, how much harder do you think it is to to be a young I'll say a young person and not a, not a child but a young person you know these newer generations I don't know what letter we're up to Z was the last one I had <laughs> You know, then when, when we grew up, and I know I have a few years on you, but still, like, it was different. Life was different 30, 40 years ago versus today with all the distractions and the environmental, um, you know, toxins, if you will, you know, screen time and and uh, just that conditioning of technology. I mean, how, how much do you think that's been an impact on generations? I'm wondering, like, you know, we all sit here and we're kind of horrified by what we see. Um uh, we, you know, the older generations, but I don't know what their world is going to look like. Um, so who knows, right? Like I look at my daughter and I set up play dates only for her and her friends to sit on their screens next to each other. And you're like, this is not why I set up a play date. <laughs> I set up a play date so you would go jump on the trampoline I bought you or swim in the pool that you all wanted to have at this new house or ride your bike around the cul-de-sac because I moved into an area so you could play outside. Like, and none of that's happening because you're on your device next to each other playing Roblox, which you can do from, you know, separate homes across. Like, and, but then I'm, you know, looking at the state of the world, I'm like, well, you know, so much of the world is going to be digital. Like, are these skill sets that they're going to need? And will they never know any differently? I mean, I don't, I just don't know what the world is like. I don't know that they will ever miss what they didn't have because it may no longer be relevant, which is sad. Um, but it's just at this point, there's so much that's unknown and so much that is unfixable. These kids, like I live in a neighborhood that I purposely moved into for my young children with a bunch of other kids. And I've never seen one of these little suckers on the street, not once, never. The streets are quiet. 
that, you know, so it's like, I don't know. I, I find it to be scary, but there's not a whole hell of a lot we can do about it. Like you can, you can take the phone, you can limit the script, but they're just, they're going to go right back to it. Well, um, I, I love what you've done with the app, the fitness app. I mean, that's, that's a way of taking technology and you making know, it work for sure, you know, and, and trying to give them you know, the education and the understanding and the parental controls and all the limitations so that there is some sort of a balance. Um, you know, but I think what's going to come remains to be seen. It, it, it obviously, right? There's no way to know. Is he going to mess with their self esteem? Is he going to mess with their physical health? Is he going to mess with the way they make connections with people? Like, I don't know. You know, it's just so different for our generation that I, I think you know limits and you know trying to to kind of get them to to take a more three hundred and sixty approach to life in every way is key. Um, and that's, and then from there, you know, we adjust as we go along and as we see how it's affecting everyone. Yeah. <laughs> it's about it, to get it, way crazier. It's about to get way crazier. <laughs> we live in interesting times. That's for yeah. sure. Um, wow. My goodness. Like, yeah, for real. Uh, but it's great to have something to focus on and to know that we're doing our collective parts, you know, as, as, as adults, as leaders to try to, you know, put something positive back out there, great examples, great tools, uh, you know, share the stories, give hope, you know, to, to folks who are open to it, you know, regardless of their age. And that's really what it's all about. Absolutely. 100%. Well, I appreciate your time. It was great to speak with you. Hope we can do this again. Likewise. Thank you for having me and thank you for your service. Thank you, Jillian.